problem. Thank you all very much for having me. We will whiz through this pretty quick and simple. I wanted to explain the demo setup real simply. We actually have eight physical servers. Each server is running a CentOS Linux 7.3, just a standard, standard build. Each server has six 800 gig SSD devices, and they're running both the SDS and SDC components. Three are also running that MDM, or Metadata Manager, component. From a networking perspective, I've got a one gig Dell uh, switch that we're using for the iDRAC connectivity. And then I've got a pair of Arista switches, and I basically have two 10 gig, two physical 10 gig links per server that we're using to drive our storage traffic. From a demo perspective, I'm just gonna walk you through the GUI really, really quickly. We're gonna provision a volume to a single client. We're going to run some large block I.O. and see what that looks like from a stress perspective. We'll do the same thing with some small block I.O. We will <coughs> then show you some rate limiting so you understand the, how dynamically you can apply quality of service to individual volumes. And then we'll do some quick failure testing both of a physical disk as well as a node that's actually running that MDM service. All right. So this is the ScaleIO kind of management, uh, management dashboard. You can run this particular GUI. There's also a, a plug-in for VMware-based environments if you'd rather do this through the vSphere web client. There's a RESTful API as well as a robust CLI. But the dashboard shows you kind of at a glance the total capacity under management of a scale I.O. system. And you can see right now there's not a whole lot going on. We've got some spare capacity that's been set aside as well as you know, 35 terabytes of capacity. When we do get some workload, you'll actually see both IOPS as well as bandwidth in this dashboard. And it's kind of nice because it breaks it out into individual read and write bandwidth, IOPS, and average I.O. size. Using the same dashboard, you can also drill through down to the individual elements, protection domains, as well as storage pools to investigate a workload on a specific storage pool instead of the whole system holistically. It also shows you how many physical devices are in that particular storage pool. So its storage pool is assigned to a protection domain, is that how it works? That is correct. The hierarchy is a system at the top, or that's kind of the big scale I.O. cluster where the MDMs live. One or more protection domains, which essentially is a fault domain or failure domain, and then one or more storage pools within that protection domain. Obviously you can have many protection domains within a system. Now the difference between a fault set and a protection domain then? A fault set exists within a protection domain. You re require a minimum of three. Mm -hmm. And rather than being, from an availability perspective, an, a protection domain I'm has sorry, an sorry, you say it requires three fault sets? That is correct. And you're only mirroring twice? That is correct. I don't understand that. From an availability perspective, we require three nodes at all times to be able to sustain the minimum loss of a single host. And it faults at effectively a node level. That is correct. So what happens is it's an yes, N plus yes. one availability I, characteristic. I understand now. Thank okay, cool. Is there some kind of a witness or a quorum that's part of that three as well? Not at all, because the metadata manager actually controls all that. So the metadata manager would, in that sense, function as the, the witness. Now, well, let me kind of dashboard here, because I know I'm under the gun time-wise. These two tiles here will light up when there's rebuild and rebalance activity. And we really do distinguish between the two. Rebuilds mean there's some kind of exposure in the system, whereas a rebalance is a passive activity. We give you the ability to quality of service that as well on a per storage pool basis. Then tiles down here, you just kind of get at a glance, the SDCs that are connected as well as defined, volumes, protection domains, how many storage pools, and then the health of that metadata manager cluster. In this case, I've got a very small MDM cluster. It's got three nodes total, one active, one standby, one tiebreaker or witness. You can also have a five-member MDM quorum, and then you can also set the system up so that multiple nodes can jump in in the event that one of those nodes is gone, so you always maintain your five-node quorum. So when a volume is defined, it's defined to a storage pool. Volumes are defined to a storage pool. And that's actually a, a really good segue for this next point is how we create volumes. So 
So in this case, my upper level system right here is tech field day. <coughs> I've got a protection domain called IaaS, and then a storage pool called SSD. One other point, we were talking about caching a little earlier. In an all-flash configuration, we disable our caching. So there, there is no caching, there's no, you talked about write back caching, all of that we can turn off. And I think that's an important point in all flash configurations. But to add a volume, it's really- Don't do any RAM caching in all flash? That's correct. I mean, you have the ability to, but we discourage you. We actually suggest you turn it off and go native to the device. So we'll create a volume, SFD 13. We'll give it a size, two terabytes. If I could just type and we say, okay. and immediately the volume is created. If we come back and look at the dashboard, you'll see we've now got four terabytes of raw capacity actually allocated as protected or in use. It's actually a two terabyte device. You get the mirroring, obviously. If I look for this device, I haven't done any LUN masking yet. So I'm just gonna simply look for the device and prove to you that I don't have any scale I.O. capacity presented to this host. We'll then go ahead and map this, which is your LUN masking, to my host N4, same map volumes. And if I run the same command now, you'll actually see my two terabyte disk is presented to this host. Go ahead and create a little large block workload. I'm gonna use a utility called FIO. You're all probably very familiar with it. Essentially, I'm doing a random read-write profile to the entire address space. So all two terabytes of this volume are being read to and written from. And I want to show you, this is a large block workload. It's 128K, uh, 128K I.O. size. And you see I'm actually doing 4.4 gigabytes per second of throughput to the single client. I told you there were two 10 gig NICs. It's 2.2 gigabytes out and 2.2 gigabytes in. So truly full duplex. I'm how many nodes in the cluster? How many storage nodes in the cluster? Eight total. 48 physical drives. And this host is actually a storage node in addition to a client. I'm sorry? We don't saturate all the disks. The cluster could give more. Uh, yeah. That's correct. If I had more network connectivity, you'd actually see a higher bandwidth ratio. I'm now going to do a small block workload. And rather than being 128K, I'm doing 4K. But again, to the entire address space of that entire volume. And I'll go ahead and swap uh, bandwidth and IOP so it's a little easier to see. But very quickly, a single client is able to reach 400,000 IOs without, uh, without even batting an eye. Which, from a storage administration yeah, perspective. IOs in the old days was, was a good. Yeah, I well, that was a big number. Four and a half million. I understand, but four hundred thousand was a reasonable number for a high-end BMAX level mm -hmm. system. And that's the single client, right? If we stacked up the clients, we'd have uh, lots of bandwidth as well. But as an administrator, maybe I don't want all that. So I'm going to I'm going to limit my bandwidth to a gigabyte per second. We'll say two hundred thousand IOs per second. Just that. Just two hundred thousand. So I'm going to minimize this so you can actually see it happen uh, real time. Let's see if I can come back here. So let's set our limits. Say close. What kind and of SSDs are you running here? You know? uh, these are, I believe, Samsung. Um, they're the 800 gig Samsung, I think 10 writes per day. But you probably see that we uh, very quickly we're able to bring the average I.O. workload down to about 200,000 I.O.s per second. And the QoS is on IOPS only, is that? Uh, as well as bandwidth. bandwidth. No, you get bandwidth and, and you can, they're independent, so you could have unlimited bandwidth and 200,000 I.O.s. You guarantee those IOPS? It's not a guarantee. You need to understand the capability of the underlying storage and make sure that you're not oversubscribing from that sense. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and create a disk failure. So I'm just going to go ahead, let's see. So we have about 10 minutes. Okay. Our rebuild will happen very quickly. We maintain our 200,000 IOs per second. 
you see the rebuild kicks in, and it's that massive parallelism, the many-to-many -many copy, that allows us to very quickly reprotect that, that failed drive. And if I come back here while this activity is going on, and I look at the individual characteristics, it's also nice because it's highlighted very clearly what device has failed. So you can see two gig left. All right, so we are completely reprotected, and that failed disk has been remediated. For my final trick, before I hand over, uh, hand over the mic to Mr. Dan Aroni here, I want you to notice up here, it's kind of hard to see, but we're connected to the MDM at 118. And I'm actually going to shut down that host. So I'm gonna cause kind of a catastrophic failure of the MDM. The MDM is, of course, a highly available component. So yes. the failover will take place, right? So you see, we lost connectivity to the MDM. Our FIO job is still there. There was a pause. And you can see down, if you kind of look below, the FIO job continues. And then our GUI reconnects. And you can see that IO continues to traverse. And we're kind of back to, uh, so back to a healthy. So you down an MDM manager node, SDS net node, and a client node, all in the same one yeah. shot, right? That is correct. Yeah. Yes. That How many, uh, so the MDM nodes are not, are allocated across the cluster, but they're not necessarily on every node in the cluster, right? Five of them. Five nodes. And they can be installed. Up to five. Up and they can be installed outside the cluster on yes. any kind of, like I put those in virtual they machines. They can be installed outside elsewhere. the cluster. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Whatever you wish. You could install them outside, inside, wherever you wish. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> and the, the internode communication, is that a bit level copy, or is that doing some kind of DDoP compression? prior to replication between nodes? Say, for example, when you're doing this rebuild. It's a peer-to-peer -peer type of copy, but it's, it's just a very simple, he will optimize the copy in the sense that if there's. It, it, will, not, it will not propagate uh, thin provisioned areas, right? Okay.